What's up, Flick Connection? This is Darren, and today I'm going to tell you how to tell if a movie is going to suck. It sucks when you're excited about a movie, you can't wait for it to come out, you go see it, and it stinks, but there are a lot of clues that you can pick up on along the way that will let you know whether or not a movie is going to suck. Uh, this is not foolproof, but it's a pretty solid list. I've been sort of cultivating this for a long time and over time I've gotten more and more accurate at predicting whether or not a movie's gonna suck before I ever see it based on some key elements that I'm gonna share with you right now. All right, this is a big one. This is one of the most foolproof ones on here and that's when the trailer gives everything away. Now, obviously it doesn't mean everything but if the trailer is telling you the story there's a good chance the movie's not very good because that is the best way they can market the movie there's no great moments that they can share there's not really particularly good footage they can put together for the trailer uh, there's no good hook that they can they can pull you in with and there's nothing particularly interesting about the movie itself that they can tease in the trailer. Better movies tend to tease some of their more interesting elements, whereas other ones that the, the filmmakers are not confident in, they tend to have to just lay everything out and say, hey, here's what you're going to watch. And that's a big, big giveaway. More often than not, I'm right on this one. And you've noticed this before. The trailer ends and you lean over and you go, I feel like we just watched the movie. If you, if you feel that way after watching a trailer, 99 times out of 100, not 9 times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, that movie is going to suck. You're going to be disappointed. So go ahead and have your antennas up for that one. But that one's almost a dead giveaway, but it doesn't always happen when a movie sucks. So if it does happen, there's a very good chance you got a bad movie on your hands. If it doesn't happen, that doesn't mean the movie doesn't suck. So how else can you tell? When the trailer is released really close to the release date, that's not a good sign. Uh, this happened uh, this summer with Stephen King's The Dark Tower. The first trailer didn't come out for it until well into the summer. It was basically three months before the release. Whereas the bigger movies that studios have more confidence in, they're releasing trailers for those six months out, 12 months out in some cases, beyond a year in other cases. Those are situations where the studios have a lot of confidence in the project and they've seen not the final, final product, but they've seen close to what the final picture is going to be. They know what they have on their hands and they know they can put more money behind it. And putting out trailers early means more money because the trailers need to run for longer. You don't just put a trailer out 12 months ahead of time and then never show anything until three months before. You're teasing it out for a longer period, which costs more money. It's just a sign of confidence the studios have in the project. The trailer coming out late and having a shorter run leading up to the release is a sign the studio does not have confidence in the success of the project. So in a lot of movies, they'll have Rotten Tomatoes scores before they come out. They've shown in small theaters. They maybe had a New York and L.A. run. They maybe had a, a small uh, uh, film festival run. And they didn't bar critics from rating the movie during those runs. They've allowed them to put ratings up. So that's how you get movies that'll have, you know, 90% on Rotten Tomatoes before it's out in your local theater. That doesn't always happen, though. Sometimes the studios actually put an embargo on reviews and, and critics are not allowed to review the movie prior to its release. This is not a good sign for obvious reasons. It's a sign that the studios don't have confidence in the picture. This does not mean it's always the case. David Fincher is one of the best directors currently working today. He does not allow his films to be reviewed before they come out. He's particular about it. He doesn't like that to happen. His movies are great. So it's not a dead giveaway, but if you're seeing a couple of these things associated with a movie you're excited about, it's not a good sign. The director. 
I like to look up the director on IMDb. After seeing a trailer I'm interested in, particularly if it's not a known director, I like to look them up and see what else they've worked on. Because maybe they worked on a movie that I liked, maybe a smaller movie that I liked. That's going to get me excited. If they haven't worked on anything, I might question, you know, how they got maybe a bigger movie. If it's a smaller movie, I don't question it at all. I, I might still be interested in it. But if they've worked on garbage, like if the movies that are on their, their filmography that they've directed are not good, all have super low ratings or you've never heard of them, it's a sign that this is just going to be another one of those movies in their filmography and maybe somehow they were able to put together a decent trailer. If it stars one of these people, it's probably going to suck. These are actors and actresses that are notorious for being cast in bad movies. Uh, that means the casting decisions are not particularly good if this person's in it. That means this person doesn't make particularly good decisions on the projects they join up with. This is just a big dead giveaway. If you've never liked this person in anything, odds are this movie coming out is not going to change things for you. It's rare that that happens. They, these types of actors tend to be pretty consistent. So that's a pretty big giveaway. Um, I hate to say this one, but you know there, there are exceptions, obviously, but they're very, very rare. They're, they're hard to think of. If you think of one, let me know in the comments. But I, I doubt I'm going to see many comments about this one. If it says from the producers of blank in the trailer that basically means they're trying to tie it to a better movie but you don't know what a producer does obviously you can look it up some producers are very hands-on but they're not necessarily involved in the creative process usually like an executive producer might be a little bit more involved but there are producers tied and they're essentially just someone that helped get the movie made that doesn't mean that because they produced some other movie you liked last year because they're tied to a new project doesn't mean that it's going to be good. In fact, it's kind of a trick that they like to use to help boost viewership for a movie that is not good. So it's actually not just not a good thing. It's, it's, it's a bad sign. It's an indicator that the studios are like, ah, we got to give it some more juice. Let's throw the producer of blank on it. And they're just trying to make an association that really isn't there. All right, if all of those things, several of those things, you, you kind of find with a movie coming out and you're excited about it, dampen, dampen, dampen your expectations. You need to bring them down because it's probably not going to be very good. Those are all signs that the movie's just crap. This last one is not a sign that it's crap, but it is a sign that you're not going to like it. If it's a remake or a reboot of something you love, Odds are it's not going to live up to any expectation that you're naturally going to have. Uh, this happened with Ghostbusters, obviously. And there are exceptions. Mad Max blew away any and all expectations. Like, I was excited to see Fury Road. I had no idea it could be nearly as good. In fact, I tempered my expectations a little bit. You know, how good could it have been? That one is a prime example of me being wrong on this particular point. But it's a decent attitude to have still. Temper, temper your expectations if it's a property you really love. It's an old franchise you love. It's just, it's made for a new audience. It cannot live up to your expectations in almost all cases. So that should help you a little bit. The other point should definitely help you. You, you just identify a dud so you don't get your hopes up and go spend your money on something that's going to stink. Um... Hopefully this helped you. It helps me a lot. I've been fooled a few times, but for the most part, I can kind of like avoid these movies and based on what people say about them after they come out, I know I've avoided some stinkers. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me. If you're new here, definitely subscribe. I give movie recommendations like crazy. I put out at least two videos a week right now. You can also follow me on Instagram. And you will see me next time.